Perfect. Hey everyone, uh, this is uh, Rahul, and today uh, we have here uh, Zach. He's over on Instagram, and I believe uh, your IG handle, correct me if I'm wrong, is uh, K Kinghorner1? Yeah, Kinghorn. Kinghorn, okay. And the reason why I wanted to uh, bring him on is because, um, number one, uh, we have, um, oh, let's just do that. Yeah, we'll just show both of us now before he shares the screen. Um, the reason is that he is into technical analysis and he shared me some of his findings. And I found it quite interesting because I'm not that into looking at the comps, but he's looking at the comps to try to figure out, hey, when the big money comes in. But uh, Zach, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, so um, what, first of all, got you into uh, the collectibles arena before we get into this technical analysis that you look at? Well, I was one of the ones that was collecting the base set Pokemon um, back in the day, and I tucked away my binder. And so I had that um, just sitting up in the closet for years and years. And um, I recently had uh, my son, he's about one and a half now. And uh, once I started seeing the Logan Pauls and the, you know, them going to the uh, different golden auctions and him with it around his neck at the boxing ring, it just really kind of sparked my interest. Um, and I have a background um, in the uh, GameStop and the AMC like squeeze. So that really got me into the technical analysis side of things. And so once I started looking into the card markets, I noticed that a lot of these same macro patterns in the charts uh, show up. And so a lot of that has to do with uh, like Richard Wyckoff's findings. And so I don't know if we're sharing the screen. You, right you, now. Could, share, you could share your screen right now. Let's okay. go to share screen on Zoom. Okay, so go. yeah, if we see here, basically it just says, you know, all the fluctuations in the market um, could basically be summed up into like one man. Um, that's kind of his theory. And so, you know, I'll let everybody, you know, I, I highly suggest everybody should go through and read this. Um, but basically it's just real simple, you know, determine the, the present position, you know, and probability of the market. You want to find things that are, you know, in harmony with the trend, obviously an upward trend. Usually it seems like with like new wax, um, you're already buying it at the peak of everybody's emotion. So unless you're getting some of those like one of ones or just an extremely rare card, I mean, really what, what value is going to be able to sustain that, that level. And so like, what I mean by that too is, so for instance, um, if we look at like a hobby box here and look at the price action, so this is a new 2021 uh, Chronicles hobby box. As of right now, it's at an all-time high. So it just seems like a very dangerous position to be in, as opposed to something like, you know, if you're looking at the FLIR prices, it's kind of, um, let's actually go back to the Wyckoff schematic. So once, once you kind of understand the cycles, um, if you will, of the markets, so in relationship to the hobby box, we're talking about making entry into the play like around here. When in reality, we're probably going to see the emotion die off and then probably see this side of accumulation again, right? And so it's kind of just better understanding the macro view of things and applying it to cards or collectibles, anything really. So let me ask you this. Uh, if you could go um, on your website here or the one you're looking at when it's oversold people don't want to buy and that's probably a better opportunity from a risk reward assuming that it's a quality uh, collectible then when it's overbought that's when you see the hype you, you see people on youtube that we watch that are jumping up and down getting really excited for and that's probably not the best opportunity even those that are flippers why, why exactly. do you think that happens well it seems to be because it's almost like those kind of breakers are the, they're in a weird position to where they want to have the relationship with the distribution, but you're, but you need to capture that volume. So the distribution sees that these, 
breakers can capture the volume, but it's literally just off of the hype. And they're going to be the ones most likely enduring the... So if they basically are able to you know, purchase all of this, they're going to be the ones holding the bag because they're at the peak of the hype or the emotion. And so the idea is to get in where nobody's looking. Exactly. And then I think uh, you sent me a message on IG and this is what you told me. You noticed that the price on WWE sealed whack has gone down quite a bit. It's funny that when you see all the breakers pushing it because they need to get rid of all the inventory. I just find that interesting and the marketing tactics that they use. Yeah, no, it's, it's to And it's, it's kind of, once you see it, it's just disgusting in a way. I mean, because they're just creating bag holders when they know that, I mean, so over time, that's the thing with these like plays or we're trying to park our money into a, a asset that's going to go up in time. And so what they're basically ensuring them is they're trapping them until they see the price action go back up. If it does go back up. Makes sense. So um, we can look at uh, some of the uh, hype going on right now. And you follow this probably more than I do. It's regarding Spider-Man. So where do you think we are in regards to the new Marvel set that came out? Do you think that people are trying to dump people accumulated before all these guys on YouTube got their product? Like, how do you think that's working out? Because I suspected something funky going on. Well, so, I mean, I feel like that the, the, I haven't looked really into the macro picture of the Spider-Man, like the metal set specifically, um but definitely there's there's so with let me show you some more of these commands. yeah so go ahead your screen. here we have an accumulation phase so this is after prices have been there's been a correction and so now this is where it's just consolidating and as it's doing that this is usually the best time to make entry into a play because it's already the price action has always consolidated and if you look here say it like the spy for instance uh you share your screen Oh, okay, thanks. I think I got rid of you. So now, let's see here. So as you can see here, so this is just like an overall um, psychology of the market. You can see this, right? No, I can't. Okay. Yeah, now I think you, I can see it now. Okay, so this is just like price action visualized. And so... A lot of the times when these sets are being released, they're usually built up the hype. So you'll see the price action basically beginning in time from here and moving on. It's just a we whether it can sustain the price action, you know, or the hype, which it usually can. So this is usually what you see is this. And this is the time that I'm saying that everybody's going to have to wait out because they're entering into the play here. And so what I'm saying is, is basically we're looking for the trend to flip and to be looking at entry into something here. And I feel like, you know, with your question regarding the Spider-Man, it could, I haven't looked at the macro picture. I'm not sure what it's done. I mean, it hasn't been in the, in people's eyes for a long time. So I'm sure it's consolidated for a while. And so these people that already have them, you know, accumulated, this is where they see, it's starting to build up and they're probably going to start selling and taking profit. You know, that's, that's the thing is you have to be the ones beforehand that have accumulated and be ready to distribute to retail. And so that's, that's the kind of play is you're literally working inverse and working against retail. Yeah. What I would add about the Spider-Man, this is a new set that came out. So just as a FYI, the 2021 uh, cards, from upper deck. Uh, but I'm looking at this chart. I think this would have been really useful in February and March of last year. I don't know how much content you were watching at that time. I'm seeing this euphoria phase. I mean, that, that's what it looked like. And then all the guys were just buying left and right. Like the Fleer 86 card, it went to what, $700,000 on your end that you follow the Pokemon card. The Charizard allegedly sold for what five hundred thousand dollars. 
Yeah, um, everything was super highly inflated. No, it was super highly inflated, but I didn't see that much content. You know, this chart would have been just fantastic for many you know, people. And that's another thing that I'm noticing is a lot of the, the price action is hidden behind these paywalls, whether it's the census, um, you know, a lot of these stock price action, you, you know, when you go to these Robin Hoods or these apps, it's real, you know, with a pencil, it looks like one single line. It's not as granular. You don't see the wicks and the candles. And so, and they don't zoom out. It's always right zoomed in. And so you can't really get a bigger picture feel for what's going on. And so the really just taking a step back and looking at the macro picture, it could be very beneficial. Do you think that uh, you're talking about Robin Hood? Do you think that all these guys front run the trades? I know that this is getting a little bit off track of what I'm saying, but maybe I could tie it into collectibles. Do you well, think go ahead. Um, there's there's definitely so with the trading and the high frequency um, trading machines that trade the stock market, you have to think too that um, hashtags are something that the retail investor we have to show off our stuff so we're hashtagging everything and so those get collected and you could basically see what's trending what's popular what's not what's what's completely dead and so for instance um you can find things that are in consolidation that if you were to look at the hashtags and you notice that there's not very much um content on it that could be like a, a potential entry on a play that could be interesting if it has uh, volume potential. Okay. Yeah. That, that just seems quite interesting because I was talking to one other guy, he's involved in the industry and he told me that he believes draft King. I, I don't want to say with a hundred percent certainty, but I'm just going based on what he said. He said that he believes that they use the data from the customers and go the opposite side if it's in uh if it's a heavily concentrated position so I, i'm just wondering if some of these tools that people use people that sell the comps that you, they use the data if there's just too much fear in a quality collectible they may be like hey let me just buy it because no one wants to buy it and they're privy to that information while everyone else isn't Totally. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, it's it, it can be very um, you could almost control the market at times when you have access to some of this information, like population reports, and you could potentially accumulate a majority of that collectible and basically control it. Yeah. And I'm just thinking like, even besides these companies that sell this information, I'm thinking of potential funds. Do you believe there are funds out there and they pay people on YouTube or Instagram to hype up this product while they're accumulating? And then while you get all that hype brewing up, be it Star Wars, now it's Spider-Man, last year was Top Shot, before it was all modern basketball, and then they're on the end just dumping onto the retail side. Yeah, well, and I had thought about that recently because you don't really see commercials anymore for anything, and so you and you don't really see advertising. And so where is all that capital being deployed to? And it most likely is being it's inventory being placed in strategic spots to hype up retail in order to get it off. It's the only thing that makes sense. Because I'm not accusing these companies of, you know, engaging in a pump and dump, but I've seen shady things in markets in penny stocks. And it doesn't take a whole lot to move these markets because there isn't that much volume. The stocks that you usually send me have millions of shares traded on a daily basis. This may be, what, a couple of hundred transactions for some of these markets, especially exactly. the high end, not that much. And then you say, oh, um, this is now being sold on auction XYZ. 
And then all of a sudden you see some YouTubers saying, hey, this is a great opportunity. And then everyone at the shows, they're like, oh, I'm chasing this. Maybe they're acting like hedge funds. It's all natural. Or there could be more, what I'm thinking, a, a conspiracy going on. Well, and there's not much accountability. You, I mean, you really don't see anybody being held accountable really for anything. I mean, just recently you heard about the FBI thing on uh, car radio. Um, did you see that recently? Yeah, Sports Card Radio did a FBI uh, story. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, it seems like only at the top, as soon as something really, really bad happens, it's like then they'll look into it. But it's really not considered market manipulation if you're gifting a breaker a case of a product to hype up. I don't, I don't think, right? Yeah. Uh, but, and the thing is that how people got around with it, I saw over a decade ago in penny stocks, they say that we have not received money uh, to promote this stock or we're not interested because we haven't received money. But they don't disclose that, hey, there could be a front company involved and technically it's not themselves. There may be multiple owners, but them personally, they're not lying. And when people say, oh, I'm not pumping that, that's a ridiculous accusation, you know, and the, there's no way to find out, but it's just the behavior just seems very strange. And I, I don't know, it, it's, I don't think the government or the FBI is going to get involved, but I guess that's how things go. And it just seems odd, you know, too, because it's like, you know, a, a new set comes out of something and it's just like, okay, a couple months later, another set comes out. It's like, how much are we really accumulating? And like, what is the, the play? Like, you know, they're kind of just guiding people to just accumulate, just to accumulate, you know, and they don't know where they're at in the price action, you know, on a macro picture. Yeah, and I just find it quite interesting that grown adults are acting like kids. So when we were kids, it was first the, there was this all sort of Nintendo games that I got, and then I got sick and tired of it. Instead of Duck Hunter, I wanted to play Mario Brothers. And then down the road, I wanted to play other Nintendo games, and then Super Nintendo games came out. So it just seems like a fad and the hype cycle and... I don't know why people keep on saying, hey, this is great to invest in, but it's just all based on hype. Even zero, not zero cool, even uh, Josh Luber's paper talked about the hype cycle and these fads don't last. And there, some people are marketing it as investments and I'm thinking this is very irresponsible. Yeah, no, it's totally true. And I think we had spoke about it before about like kind of moving into blue chips, um, you know, during bad times. And it's kind of seems to be what every, you know, the big boys are doing right now, um, moving into the bigger cards because they could withstand a bear market. And it's, it just seems like, you know, and I've noticed, so there's um, Dragon Ball Z, the Pokemon cards with um, CGC, the, there's no population report available. It's so when, when that, releases and people see the population on some of these cards they're going to say oh my gosh this was printed to oblivion and like what's that going to do to the price action so i just feel like people really need to look at the macro picture and understand um you know accumulation distribution consolidation supply and demand zones and at least you know take a look at what they're doing and why and what they're collecting and consider volume too yeah, that's a good point about volume. I'll address volume probably later in the video, but you're talking about the big boys are, they're accumulating the big cars like the Mantle car, the 52. And despite the stock market going down, despite all the negativity that we see right now in the headlines, even the mainstream media, the Mantle sold for over $12 million. And in my videos, I always talk about intrinsic value. You, even you sent me a message about, hey, these rare cards, scarce cards that you rarely see out for auction, it has intrinsic value and those will still hold up over time, assuming that it doesn't come out for auction every two months. Exactly.
And so speaking about the bigger picture and like, what does that do to modern cards? You know, you have all this hype built up. My, my son's uh, outside, yelled through the door. <laughs> so you have all this hype built up on these card sets. And then, you know, you have all the big money moving into the blue chips. It's just, it just seems like a recipe for disaster. Speaking of recipe for disaster, you even sent me a couple of years from now, you see the stock market heading downwards. I do too. I do see a run up before we see that pump down. Now, if you're correct around a couple of years, based on the patterns you're looking at, do you think that the card market is just going to implode even more or will they hold up? Or is it just going to be like the quality cards that, will hold their value it, it seems like um modern cards it's just i don't sh see the real inherent intrinsic value in those long term that would be spe all speculation plays so if, if you were one sitting on those that may be good but yeah as the market goes down people are going to want to take profits where they can and intrinsically say if you have something with a population of 500 or um, less than 10. I mean, that's a big, big difference there or up in the thousands, depending on what we're talking about. So I feel like intrinsically, you want to be mindful of that. Yeah, I'm just thinking next 10 years, even if there's a crash, what would I want to own? I would want to own maybe not the FLIR 86 cards, maybe if they take more of a discount to that, but anything Jordan, the first few years of Michael Jordan, I would look at some of the earlier years of Gretzky and maybe some younger players like Giannis on the sports card end. But what are you looking at? I know you look at a whole variety of collectibles. So what would you hold despite, okay, we see a crash in two, three years, but just a longer term buy and hold and you don't have to liquidate because of whatever. I think basically in terms of kind of the stock market, blue chips, kind of transferring that over to collectibles, it just seems like anything with a low census number. And I really look for volume. Um, we were talking about Spider-Man before. Um, Spider-Man has volume, you know, so it could see swings in the market, but it has the volume. Um, and just the 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 never ending future potential of you know movies comics you know they have the Spider Man twenty ninety nine um, I mean they have a bunch of bunch of future stuff that they can do as far as the the Fleer um, eighty six it's like that's a blue chip you know it's probably at its peak as far as hype you know if you don't mind withstanding some of the swing maybe let me let me bring up the um, schematic one more time. Yeah, sure that. So let me bring up a picture also. So this is kind of, let's see. Here's a schematic. This is a, a conventional um, reaccumulation. This would be a distribution. I share it. I don't see it. Oh, sorry. Let's see. Okay. All right. There it goes. So we should have the three images here. These are the different accumulation and distribution phases, basically. So this would be like the peak of emotion. This is, you don't really want to make entry during distribution this is when the big boys are distributing to you to us yeah, if you can enlarge it so people on the screen can see if we zoom in yeah that's a little better okay so this is distribution this is basically like i said when the distributors are kind of offloading onto you now coming off of this this would be where the price action is consolidating and through here, and this is kind of where the ideal position is to make entry. You know, you want to be done with the correction and starting to see an uptrend. Now, you know, you could be zoomed in too close, you know, looking at it on the day, 
or the minute, you know, the, everything is, you, you don't want to be looking too closely. You want to really, I most of the time look at the weak candles and I could show you that here. So this is the spy. And so a lot of the times, let me go back to this FLIR picture. So here on the price action, they only show it from uh, July 20, 2020. And so you can't really get a good idea of the macro picture on what's going on. And so in my opinion, we're on that arc of distribution. Even after a year of uh, selling? Yeah, because I mean, as you can see here in October 2020, 21 it had its all-time high and then july 2022 it didn't have enough volume or it didn't have enough energy to withstand that or make meet its all-time high so now what kind of uh volume or what kind of emotion do we have to build it up anymore i mean are we gonna get another drake break with ken you know it's i just don't see it happening yeah, I mean, there is that star card, so that could um, be the other reason why it's taking, a not a beating, but you may not see that demand as much as it was in February of that year. I could see that. And going back to your uh, Wyckoff page that you just showed a second ago, so where do you think we are right now? Are you, you think we're in phase C? As far as like compared to like the spy, uh, not the spy, just wh where you think we are just in this uh, cycle. Well, I definitely say we're in distribution. Um, it's just a matter of where. So, like I said, if we had just made an all-time high, um, back, what did I say? February, twenty twenty-one. Yeah. March twenty twenty-one around exactly. there. Right there. So now we're we're making lower lows or lower highs rather. And so it would seem to be like we're in phase D. Okay. Yeah, I mean it, it's quite interesting how you could tie technical analysis to this. I had another guy, Chad from CNT Collectibles. He uses Bollinger Bands sometimes as technical analysis. He uses volume as well. It's quite interesting. He's a financial advisor. So I, I'm just thinking, I saw this. Um, do, do you remember Jeff Wilson was very bearish for a while or for just the span of a few weeks and maybe the great curator? I don't know if you watched their videos. Yeah. Yeah. You do. Yeah. They were very bearish. You know, as a S and P was crashing to what 3,600, everyone was bearish under the sun. And then we have seen some cards go up. Obviously the star card has gone up in value, value, but that's because it's in a PSA holder, but some of the other Gatorade cards of Jordan have gone up. You see the mantle cards. So I just look at it as, okay, tech, not even using technical analysis. When everyone's bearish, like two months ago, that was a time maybe to accumulate assets that are quality that haven't seen too much hype. And then once we see the next run up, be it the next one, two years, I think that will be another good time to distribute while the modern cards will continue to be in distribution, but there will be some scarce cards from back in the day that will hold some value. Exactly. Yeah, oh. and I think it's it's similar to like, you know, with the stock market, you have your each individual ticker and those have their their own cycles within. Same thing with these cards. It's like those are, each card is its own ticker. So they're going to have their own life cycle of price action and so you know as the 86 fleer is possibly in distribution you said the other card could possibly be in a different type of uh pattern right now you know and we can check that right now um the 1984 star yeah let me pull that up here so that could totally be in a different position you said what was it 
the, uh, 1984 star. I don't know if it's in here. I don't know if it's in there. I mean, there's not that many sales of it in a PSA holder. There's well, look at the skybox. There's some cool cards in here. Uh, oh, the USA team. Okay, I've seen this one come up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's just hard. So basically, you want to find you want to look for something that's basically in its life cycle had a run up but then it's also distributed back to a point where it's been before you know you want to see its old price history you want to be in that range to remake entry you know because now you all that time of it coming down you could potentially bypass that so why speculate you know at the top is kind of what i'm saying when you can kind of look at these more macro pictures exactly i'll maybe leave it on this so the industry, you have a lot of guys saying that, hey, just be positive because that's good for your cards. And if you're not positive, why would you want your cards to be coming down? I just find it quite interesting that just looking at basic accumulation distribution patterns, I mean, that's what people need to look at, not whether or not, hey, some guys on YouTube are making, in quotes, cornball content. And okay. that's not attracting people. I think there's just way more to that than just what, you know, some people on YouTube say. You know, and that's kind of it is I like to really just simplify kind of the bigger picture of things and understand what's going on. And I mean, that's really all we're all trying to do, really. And so, yeah, for anybody to try to bash, you know, looking at price action, um, I just I would laugh at that. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, uh, Zach, uh, where can people find you again? So I'm kind of active on Instagram a little bit. It's mainly pictures of my of my kid. Um, but it's actually so I work for a YouTuber. Um, I do construction, but I but he makes uh, construction content. So um, I'm constantly making pretty cool, fun content. But yeah, my Instagram handles. Um, king horn and the i is a one with a and then an underscore at the end so king horn underscore yeah i i, I think that you should make some content maybe start a youtube page or maybe some other content because i think a lot of people would be interested in it and maybe you could detect the hype the total hype the euphoria that'd be useful for people in my opinion yeah you know i i've been thinking about it a while and just to kind of put it together in a way that people could see it and just kind of understand it just basically, I think it would benefit them. So yeah, I really appreciate that. Awesome. Thanks for coming on again, Zach. Yeah, for sure, man. I'll talk to you soon. Yep.